so you'll get a bit clearer explanation of it, okay? Anybody else have any questions? I, I do have sure. dealing with the chakras and things of that nature. My pineal gland, or the seventh chakra, um, I was having a conversation with someone who has uh, been, been in conscious group, I guess, like at least 20 more years, because okay. 50 something years old. Okay. Baby is getting in. And um, something that I, 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 I call, I, consider myself more of an empath because I can almost sense people okay. and when they're definitely telling the truth or not it's just something that you know right. it's, it's breathing to me right. you know and um, in talking to this person <clears throat> and then they were um, attempting to be deceptive and, okay. and, and doing what so I'm sensing them just you know just and then and he's like oh, you, get out of my mind I'm like what it was so intent right. he was like you are um, you, you get out or I will eject you I'm like what are you talking about? I'm like, go ahead and do it. He goes, it, it will be hurt. And then, it, literally, I'm like, I have this headache, though. That's like, it's, it's intense. Right. And... It's, well, you <laughs> if you go back, again... Tell me. If you go back to West Africa, and I know you said you were of Haitian descent, uh -huh. but if you go back to the Gungun, okay, uh -huh. um, they had what they call witch doctors. They had medicine people. Okay. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of your abilities come... Naturally. Naturally. That's what he comes, he's like, he's like, yo, warlock. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? But that's a good well, thing. But, it, but it's uncontrollable warlock. Right. It's, it's just natural, just breathing. Yeah, it's true. My great-grandfather and my, my grandfather and my grandmother from my father's side, which my mother kept me away from, from them. They were um, voodoo priests and voodoo priestesses. And so was their, their fathers. Right. So it's, um, so he's, that's, he's like, yo, warlock. I'm like, this is intense. But anyway, so I'm well, what you'll find if you work with the Petro Lojas or the Budon, the Petro, yeah, Papa Legba, Ezeli Danto is the head, mm -hmm. but she's dangerous. I'm not, I'm not, a, a, well, she's not really dangerous to you, right? Not to me. I've seen the work that I, I, I've seen the work that has tra transpired to other people who've t attempted to do me. I'm not attempting to, to connect with her because I know that I would have to work with her all the time. I know that she's there and she's given like. You know what I'm saying? People what, just, what, what, what you have to do to appease that, though, this is what you got to understand. That and you're probably familiar, Baron Samedi too. If you go to a graveyard, okay, this is what you need to do. I'm just telling you. If you go to a graveyard, uh -huh. there's a certain ritual that you need to do to access that power of those spirits. Because when we say we deal with Iku or death, we're not talking about death in the negative sense because death represents the transformation to a new beginning. When you talk about these other deities of death, not death as we know it on the mundane level, they are deities that work with the higher realm. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of those witches and warlocks and medicine people in your DNA and your bloodline. That's why right. I said earlier, connecting with your bloodline. That doesn't mean you have to exclusively be initiated, but you do need to acknowledge them at your altar. That's exactly what, the, what, what I, I, when I went to see a, 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 a doctor uh -huh. or a, a, I got right you. here. And he basically told me that they, they're, they're there, you just need to place them. Correct. And then as you place them, you know, you'll have... You, you, but I'm not interested in... I mean, it's... I don't know. Well, here's the thing. So, it's, not, it's not a matter of... You never want to become exclusive in one thing. It's not a matter of being interested in it. If you want to master your DNA master. and control the experience, okay. you have to address every aspect of your DNA. That's how you get to the state of quote-unquote perfection. I got you. So it doesn't mean you need to be immerse yourself and be strictly that, but you do need to access the energy. Because if you don't, what, what tends to happen is the energy will, regardless, going to find you and find ways to access you. So once once you're able and to... Correct. Once you are able to access the energy and use it at your benefit... Then you'll be able to control it. It won't. I that's all. So it's just best to just just, just, just flow pay homage and flow it. You have to. Okay. It's not a choice because when once you open that door spiritually and once you raise your vibration and your consciousness is expanded and open, you're going to draw everything that's connected to you by DNA, and that's not just good. That's bad too. Uh -huh. But a, a master magician knows how to take the bad things and turn we're, that we're, around. We're, we're, we're for the, yeah. Because what tends to happen to some people too is. There are people in your bloodline that'll make contact with you because you are the vehicle to get here, and they might not be good people. So that you know, and ah, you know, that actually came to me in realization that I was like a portal almost for spirits to flow through here. Of course, and and I can feel them when they're like, like almost like a shake. Right. Correct. No, but that's but you gotta understand. 
if you're the closest bloodline that they can connect with, regardless, let me get an example. It could be your great, 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 great uncle you never met, never saw. But because he has a blood connection DNA to you, and, and some around, right, be able to. And, and some of them don't. They're, 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 they're disembodied. They're, they're caught between here and the higher realm. So what they want to do is they got to find a vehicle to get here, and sometimes you could be right. that close a vehicle. But when you know how to communicate with the spirit, then you can communicate with it and you can control and dictate. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm, interested. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? Please. And you can place that spirit. We 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 were talking about some mirror magic last week, opening up portholes. You can bring bands in, but you have to learn the same process. You have to learn to send them back out. Right. Problem is when they come, you got to learn to send them back away, because some people open themselves up to this energy, but they don't know how to send them back. Right. Or or even choosing which comes through. Correct. So what I would say is educate yourself to it. Become as knowledgeable as you can. And the more that you know about your bloodline, the, that's a blessing. And at least access or pay homage to it in some level. You don't need to be in Gophi. You don't need to become exclusively a Vudon priestess. But you can't ignore what's in your DNA. No, I, 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 that, that I've realized. Okay, as long as you know that part. That, that, that's okay. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. All right, nobody else. Good. Okay. All right, so... Now the chakras, as we talked about, we talked about, we talked a little bit about the throat chakra. We mentioned the the pineal gland or the brow chakra, the crown chakra, right? And you hear everybody always say that my my crown chakra is activated, and it's not. Most people bypass the lower chakras, such as the root chakra and the sacral chakra. The root chakra is key because it is like the foundation in order for everything to work in its correct capacity. So people pat bypass that and they want to get super spiritual. And this is why these are your people that'll they're into everything and they study everything and they know everything, but they'll say, I'm doing all these things and none of it's working. And the reason why none of it's working is, is because they're not grounded in their root chakra. Mm. The root chakra keeps you grounded in the earth. It keeps you grounded, it keeps you centered, it keeps you focused. It's the bridge between the physical realm and the spiritual realm. So it's very important, excuse me one sec. Very important. Hold on one sec. I just got somebody. I just got to respond to this text. Um, it's very important. That was just important. So if you're not grounded in your root chakra, meaning you'll find there's a lot of people that you know that they're struggling with one aspect in their life. They're either struggling financially, but they have the spiritual thing together. They're very intelligent. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very spiritual, but they're broke as shit. I'll be right. honest. Let's keep uh -huh. it real. Yeah. Then you have the other individual mm -hmm. that might be successful financially, but they're, there's always something a void. There's something missing in their life. They got money. They've got materialistic things. They got a nice house. They got a great family, good mm -hmm. life, etc. But they always seem to not completely be satisfied more on a spiritual level because they're lacking in the spiritual department. Now, a, a true master, he or she, knows that fine line right in the middle. Now, when you're spiritually in tune, first of all, one another myth I want to dispel, and unfortunately in some conscious circles, People equate with being spiritual with being broke. And that couldn't be the furthest thing from the truth. If you're conscious and knowledgeable, you should never be broke. I don't mm -hmm. care what anybody says. People will justify being broke and say, well, it's because I'm spiritual and I'm sacrificing. And that's a bunch of crap. That is post-traumatic slave syndrome. I don't care what anybody says. If you want to talk about post-traumatic slave syndrome. If you are conscious, there's you should never reach into your pocket and not have any money. You should never worry about mundane things. Where am I going to live? How am I going to pay my bills? What type of car I'm driving? When you're truly connected to the spirit, all that stuff falls into place. And I'm speaking for myself. I'm not a millionaire, but I don't worry about where my next meal is coming from. I don't worry about, I have cars. I have houses. I don't care about that stuff. Because once you petition the cosmic, 
for what you need as opposed to what you want. It's two different things. See, people go into this with, I want this and I want that. That's not how this works. Because when you try to come into levels of consciousness, especially dark magic, what dark magic does is it abruptly brings the change you need, not the change that you want. It's two different things. So know that. That's why I was telling like with you, when you open yourself up to consciousness, you don't have a choice. Spirits were going to come to you regardless. And sometimes that change is dramatic. It turns your whole life upside down. It, it might reveal to you the job that you're working is not the right job. You might be in a bad relationship. You might, you know, realize there's a, you have problems with your kids, but you're not identifying it. The spirit will show you not what you need. It shows you what you want. That's two different things. Okay. So first and foremost, we got to get out of this concept. And I see this in a lot of conscious circles. I, I can't take you seriously if you got all this high knowledge and yet you can't pay your mortgage. It just doesn't resonate with me. That's, you're not living the principles. You're not living that. Yeah, but what about um, the man that lives in the ills? The man that what? Live in the ills. Like in the hills? Yeah, like yeah, in Jamaica. They correct. Don't, they don't deal with money. Correct. Well, that's like different. The, the Himalayas are, correct. The Buddhists are, whatever. Well, let me give you an example. That's a good point. In, back in 1992, I spent some time in St. Croix. And they have a group of brothers there that are what they call mountain rosters that live up in the mountains. Right. And they pretty much live off the earth. I spent a week with them. Right. They don't smoke weed. They grow it boil it it's it's more on a network completely in tune with nature it's kind of like the hanandawas or the or the fuzzy wuzzies right now in egypt who live in nature and only come into the cities when they need need something when they come people get the hell out of the way because of their appearance and how they look but you got to understand they're living to their fullest capacity in their environment so they're still the masters of their domain not mm. being controlled by their domain i'm talking about we're living in the Western Hemisphere. Let's say us here in America. We need capital. If you say that you don't need money, you don't need cars, you don't need houses, you don't need food, then you need to take your ass and go live in the mountains. That's what I'm trying to say. Because you can't live in an environment that you're trying to propagate a lifestyle that's not conducive to this environment. And this is why like people, people take this the wrong way, but this is a reality. If America is so bad, I hear people talk about Africa, Africa. I say, well, then why don't you just leave now and go back to Africa now? And then it gets quiet. Because you're going to find out people find excuses for not being successful and not reaching their, their, their complete potential. You know, how many, you know how many debates I used to get into in New York with uh, New York is Babylon, this and that. But I'd be on the streets building with all these people. And then my thing, I would tell them, well, why are you here? And then the truth, well, I left Jamaica or Trinidad or Barbados to come here to make money. Oh, so now it's not Babylon because now you want to come here to make money. Which one is it? What I'm trying to say is that's, that's a confused state of consciousness. But what about the Pan-Africanism, like mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey preaching about going back Well, that's, no, but that was a great thing, but he was, he, but it was an economic system. Mm -hmm. There was a living structure, there was an educational system. That's fine. But, now the thing is, we have to take that and update it for 2016. If somebody said, if we took the plan that Garvey had, the blueprint, mm -hmm. we would have to take it and adjust it to 2016, because first we would have to say, right now in this day and time, the condition of the world where would we go in Africa to do that? That's question number one. Because you also got to remember, freedom of speech and freedom of religion, Africa has been indoctrinated by Islam and Christianity. They are strict, fanatical Muslims and Christians. Look at Nigeria. Look at Sudan. Africa's a huge place, man. Oh, it's crazy. Right? It's crazy. It's a big place. It's got a lot of different cultures. Sure. Now, there are some places, but we would have to establish where would we go. And you would have to have the support of the United States. It's like the, it's like of the course. Of the course. Th there's a lot of politics yeah, to it. To there's a lot of politics to it. A lot of people don't want to go there.